It's Kate Matthews here and we're about to do our All About Stencils live workshop and we've got some lovely guests here today. I can't wait to share it with you. Stencils uh, are really popular but they're also a little bit tricky to get the hang of. So we're going to run through some of those things for you uh, with you today. Um, so my special guests here are our instructors. If you're in a face paint club, you will probably be familiar with them. Uh, let me just bring this up here. So we have Ratty Widjastuti. Ratty is in uh, Adelaide. We've got Lorna Nichols, also Adelaide, Kimberly Houlihan in over in Mandura, which is a little bit south of Perth, and Ellie Suttery, also in Perth. So we've got a fantastic um, lineup of things coming up. Let us get going. And uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet today and pay our respects to elders past and present. I'm in northern New South Wales and the Clarence Valley, and our local people are the Yagle people. So I'd love to know where you are from and maybe you can say hi in the comments. Um, we've got Bev here and she is helping me, uh, you know, say hello and keep check the comments. So let's see who we've got. We've got, uh, let's see, so Danny, oops, that's the wrong one, Danny. Danny from Adelaide, so another Adelaidean in the house. Um, Naomi, Naomi is tuning in from Kudamandra. Hey Naomi, nice to see you here. Um, we've got Lisa. Lisa is not working and she is from a small county town in Western Australia. So a few guys from the West Coast here. Uh, who else? We've got Chloe. Hi, Chloe from Penrith. That's west of Sydney. And <laughs> with three kids, yeah, you're going to be distracted. That's for sure. Absolutely. Um, Shepparton, Victoria. Hey, Katie. Lovely to have you here um, <laughs> at a play centre. Fantastic. We've got lots of people here today, it's wonderful. Uh, Charleville, Queensland. Um, let's have a look. And Margarita, uh, Margarita says, hello, lovely to see you all. Let's have a look. So, all about stencils. And uh, I just, before we dive into that, I just wanna sort of introduce it by saying, you know, stencils, well, I think we had a poll and I think about, 60 to 70% who answered in the poll in YouTube, if you haven't done that, you can do that now, uh, had used stencils before and 30% hadn't. Now, if you've ever used a stencil, the first time you use it, it's probably going to be a bit frustrating if you've got your paint too wet and you might think it doesn't work, uh, but we're going to show you how they do work today. Um, maybe you've got some stencils, but you're not sure what to do with them, or maybe you haven't tried before and you want to see what happens. So as I said, we've got a poll in our YouTube channel comments so you can take a look at that uh, fantastic maybe Beverly can pop in in our chat and let me know um, what the results of the poll are fantastic and also while you're there maybe you could subscribe to my youtube channel it's face paint club we used to be called face painting school but we've rebranded and we're face paint club and we'd love to have some new subscribers all right so I have a question for you for anyone who has used stencils before what was it like the first time? Was it super easy? Did you struggle? What kind of problems did you have? And what would you like to learn today? Maybe you can pop that in the comments of our YouTube chat and we'll just have a look and see what people have to say. Let's see, we've got uh, watching from East Tennessee in the US. Hello, that must be middle of the night there, I reckon. Uh, and Janine, hey Janine, Gypsy Janine from Melbourne. Lovely to have you here. So yeah, if you've got any questions about stencils, pop them in the comments. We will have time for Q&A at the end. And I'd love to hear if you've got any creative solutions for using them. Now, I just wanted to quickly give you an also an introduction to Face Paint Club. And many of you will know that uh, be part of our Facebook group. Our Face Paint Shop Australia customers may know us from there. Um, it's really evolved from the Face Painting School, which I started in 2012, 2013, where we toured international artists around Australia. That was heaps of fun. But my, I, my goal was to bring face painting to more people and bring it online for, for training and bring people together. So this is where Face Paint Club has evolved from. And our new learning platform has been, is been up and running for a few months now. It's very exciting. And we've got over 800 members. We've got a pro level coming soon uh, and we're gonna go international. So it's all very exciting. Just take you for a quick look inside. And okay, let's see. So this is a little bit of a preview. If you haven't seen inside, our community. This is the new platform we're working on. We also have a, a mobile app. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. 800 members, we've got heaps of people. We've got a, a video library, we, um, the weekly challenges in here as well. 
um, our crash course for beginners, all sorts of things going on in there. So, and our tips, quick tips and tricks, the library as well, live events, it's all happening. It's really exciting. This has been uh, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. So it is fabulous to have it up and running. Now, let me just take a drink. Let's see here. Okay, it's time to introduce, it's, I'm trying to introduce Lorna and when I can find this button here, because I've got two screens, fantastic. Lorna, Lorna, you will have seen Lorna if you've been inside our Facebook club community, either on Facebook or in our um, a special our app, uh, our private community. And Lorna is from Adelaide. She has a business called Lenny Din and she's been face painting for about a decade, is, I think uh, that would be about right. And she's a multi-award winning face and body painter and she's a multi-artist. She, Lorna does all sorts of stuff. Uh, let's bring her in now. There we go. There's Lorna's. Oh, she's ready to paint. Fantastic. Um, and Lorna is, let me just um, pop this up full screen. Let's have a look. And uh, she's been instructed at the Australian Body Art Awards in Melbourne. Uh, she teaches adult learning and she's one of our, our leaders and guides in the Face Paint Club community. All right. Let us bring Lorna on board. Hey, oops, hang on. I got there. <laughs> Too many <laughs> buttons, eh? Hey? There we go. All right, we're good. We're good. So here's Lorna. And today Lorna has got a little selection of stencils and she's going to run through some of the um, some troubleshooting as well. So Lorna, I'll let you take it away. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Um, so today I'll first of all, I would like to show you uh, what not to do. Um, and I'm going to be using it on the board today. So if you are a new face painter and you use a stencil for the first time, everybody does it. Too much water will make it bleed under the stencil. So I'll just show, get me sponge, water. You only need the sponge to be damp. You don't need it to be saturated. If you add too much water and your paint is, can you see that? It's bubbly. When you add it to the skin, or in this case the board, you're going to get a bubbly mess and you're going to bleed underneath. It's a blob. Whereas if you, and I'll use the same sponge, but I'll use the other side, lightly spritz it and you can feel it with your finger. I'll just wipe off that stencil. That's another thing. You need a dry stencil to make sure your stencil is clean and dry from your last time. And I'll just do it a bit further down. And I'll use the side that I've lightly spritzed, rub it into the paint. You need a nice consistency and you can, I don't know whether you can hear, but you want it to be tacky and it kind of makes a sucking sound when you get a sponge on the paint. And when you get it right and lay it flat on the skin, dab gently holding either side of the stencil and removing it. On the skin, I tend to push down with my thumb and then bring up the other side, but obviously it's a board, so that's not going to work. But you'll get a cleaner design when it's drier. You want it on the dry side. So that's what's not to do. So today... I've got these two stencils. So the fairy, I don't know whether you can see that. And a star. And I thought it'd be nice to do a fairy crown. So the first thing I will do is load up a sponge to do the background colour. Can you guys hear me? It's very quiet. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah, I've got everyone speaking. Yeah. Right. We're all watching attentively. <laughs> so loading my paint, I can tell that's a bit wet, so I'll just keep loading it to get the right consistency. It does take a bit yeah. to load a, a paint, right? It's not it like really you does. do it like just, yeah. Yeah, especially if you haven't used the cake or it's a new cake for um, mm. a new cake or you haven't used the cake for a while. So you have to get the, the paint right in there. I'm loading it from the yellow through to the pink. You'll notice I'm using a quarter sponge. I cut my half moons in half. 
Um, so yes, I pinch the corner and dab in the corner of the eye. It's hard on a board. It's not the same as a real face. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they sit still and uh, they don't complain and they're always ready, but there's nothing like painting your skin. Yeah, especially especially with stencils. Stencils on a board, you're not going to get the same. Um, it's not the same because skin absorbs the water faster, uh, whereas it just sits on top of these boards. And consistency yeah. and how wet the paint is is very important for stencils. And you also need the paint to be dry underneath. If you're doing a layer underneath, absolutely, the paint must absolutely. be dry underneath. Yeah. So that's just some eyeshadow. And then I'll do a half circle on his forehead. And you can see how wet it is on the board. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera. But yeah, you can see it's great. I will need to wait for that to dry before I do any stenciling on top of that. So whilst that's drying, I'll go in with the other designs um, elements around it. So I will do some double dip flowers. So loading my white. And I'm using a Flora number two brush. Just really activate and get a nice creamy consistency. And then I like to wipe off the tip And then go in with the second colour. I might use might use blue to get that. Yep, see it. And I might, can you see that? I don't, yeah, we can. It's kind of hard to paint petals, I find, on um, on the plastic as well. Yeah. It's not too bad. It doesn't have the same drag and drop as what skin does. Yeah, and resistance. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just using this brush to add a few petals and to, how many did I do there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four, like that. And I might go down like that, like that. And that's still wet, I can still see. So what I might do is, here's another tip, add a bit of glitter. Mm. It sucks up a bit of the water. Wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to use a finger sponge or finger dauber or mini dauber, depending upon what you want to call it. Spritz the top of it. Again, you want a nice um, dampness, but not dripping. You don't want it to be um, too wet. Same reason as the other sponges. And I'll use my Merin Paradise White. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm using, I might go blue. Because you want some contrast, right? You, you want to have a nice yeah. contrast. Yeah, with, I was yeah. going to do the stars first, but I might go the fairy first. So this is my fairy. I reckon that's dry enough. And I'm going to put her standing in the middle of the arch and gently dab, holding either side. You want the stencil to be flat with the skin. So forehead's so, a good spot for it. A cheek is not a great spot for it. Um, cheeks can be tricky because but, they tend to bulge. When you do a uh, stencil on the cheek, the cheek, uh, I was going to say fat, that's not the word. <laughs> the chubbiness of the cheek no resistance. Squish, yeah. will squish out through the stencil. So it'll be tricky. But, yeah, you want to walk your fingers around the stencil, making sure that all parts of the stencil are flat when you're applying it. And, again, on a person on skin, I would push my thumb, which will then, this edge will then flick up and it's easy then to remove. Cool. So that's that. So then um, I can then do, again, ideally I would wait for that to dry because if I immediately go on with this, the blue of the fairy will get on this and it could smudge. So it dries a lot quicker on skin. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. So I'll load up the white 
Marin Paradise, a little spritz, making sure I get the nice suction, the, the tacky sound. Yeah. It's sticky. And then I will place the stars. This stencil is actually really good. It's, it gives me the pattern immediately. I just need to follow what's there. So I would place that in the middle, gently dabbing. Again, walking your fingers around the stencil. If you miss one or two stars, it's not going to matter. Dabbing motion um, will be more clearer than if you drag it. If you drag it, you run the risk of damaging your stencil. And then from there, it's just a matter of swirls and curls and dots and spots. So then I'll go in with my round number three. And I'll just add dots and spots as I think needs filling in. I don't know whether you can see that I'm filling, covering it. Trying to make it symmetrical, but I am not a master of symmetry symmetry that's pretty much it beautiful it's very pretty oh my gosh the sparkles are just coming through too i might do load up a bit of that and just to bring in on either side of the eye not necessary but do -do -do. very nice i oh, think the sparkles you just cannot believe how much they're like coming through on the camera it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. pretty and then to clean the stencil you can um have a tub of water clean water submerge and then gently rub with your finger and then lay it on flat to dry on a towel or if you are very careful use a um a wipe lay it down flat and then with another white gently rub over the top you don't want to get wipes or anything caught on the plastic of the stencil because you will damage mm. it and these stencils will last you years if you look after them thousands of designs can be accomplished how do you do you have them on a, a ring or how do you store them in your when, when i have two i have two ways i use um a ring for the ones that i don't use very often and i have them in my kit that i can rifle through Otherwise, the ones that I use all the time, which stars, um, dots, um, just and uh, snowflakes, the ones that I use all the time, I attach a little bit of Velcro to the back and have it Velcroed onto the back of my kit so then I can just grab it and then when I've finished, I stick it straight back up again. That's a really good tip. Yeah, because having them on the ring when you're trying to fiddle through. Yeah, and you... that's the thing. Yeah, I don't have... On the job, I don't have time to keep flicking through the ring to try and find the ones I want. So I have probably about six stencils I use all the time and they are literally on, in, on Velcro at the back of my kit that I can immediately see and grab. I also, um, if I feel like I want to do a certain design that involves a stencil, I have it on the back of my kit because kids will see it and ask for it whereas if I don't particularly want to do a design like sometimes I don't feel like doing a mermaid or I don't feel like doing Elsa I will hide that stencil so they don't necessarily it's not front of mind for them exactly exactly yeah that, that was fantastic well I can see lots of people are joining us today we've got um, quite a few people watching live and if anyone watching the replay we hope you're enjoying it you can also give us a thumbs up and follow us on YouTube, uh, so so great to have you all here. Now, um, Lorna, ha has that is that it for your little demo? I think so. Unless anybody's got any questions, I think I'm done. This very design could be done on the arm as well if you want to do a little rainbow, and you can do. I just I'm not very good at stenciling myself. It's near impossible. Oh no, it's too hard. It's, it's like well, yeah. It's I mean, it could, be, it could be done if I, but it's not going to be great because I'd have to. Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> 
No, it's fabulous. Thank you so much. We do have, um, we will have Q&A at the end. So anyone has questions, pop them down. Bevy's in there looking at uh, who's chatting and uh, what questions you have. So we will get back to them at the end. Thank you. It's nice to see you, Lorna. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Lovely. Uh, so I realised that I kind of jumped ahead a bit and um, and I forgot to kind of introduce what we're going to talk about today, sorry. Uh, so I wanted to quickly give you um, a run through about the difference between a face paint stencil and a glitter tattoo stencil, because I know sometimes people get those things confused, especially when they're first starting out, um, some of the popular brands and designs, why we might use stencils from face painting, um, why uh, common, some pro common problems in troubleshooting. Well, Lorna's just covered those, how to clean them. Lorna has already done that for us. And while you're watching today, Take a note because every painter will have a different way of doing it, a slightly different way. And so it's good to see all the different variations and then think about, um, you know, how try a few out for yourself and see what works for you. So face paint stencils. I have a couple here. Let me just bring this up to full screen. I'm just, you know, I haven't used this technology for a while, so I'm getting used to it. Uh, again, so we've got, a, you know, some popular brands. We have the Ooze stencils, and they're quite a larger one compared to the Tap stencils, which are quite a bit smaller. Ooze tends to have sort of multi parts to their designs, so, and different sizes as well. Um, that's another Tap one, and that a boomerang stencil. Look, there's heaps of different. Um, stencil designs you've got patterns and patterns are quite popular and they can add different dimensions to your design and then you've got the sort of design elements like the fairy that Lorna just was using and they can sort of add a focal point to the, and as you saw Lorna put hers in the middle of the forehead which is one of the focal points so that's a great spot to put it so as Lorna said they're reusable they're made from a, a plastic um, like it's quite thin and flexible if you haven't used it before uh, you can clean them you use them again and again not to be confused with these type of stencils which is a glitter tattoo stencil these guys have three layers a clear layer on the top that you peel off a paper layer at the back and then the stencil layer and so these are self-adhesive and so you don't really put these on over the top of your face paint uh, and they're single use so that is a bit of a key difference between those types of stencils um, the, both types of stencils can also be used for airbrush. Uh, popular designs would have to be what we sell a lot of at Face Paint Shop Australia is mermaids and fairies, snowflakes, stars uh, and unicorns for sure, patterns, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, they're really popular, but you do learning how to use them properly will just will make your work. <laughs> Look, you'll, you'll learn to love them. If, you, if you've tried them before and they've made a mess, you probably think they don't work, but they do. And it's just a matter of, uh, you know, finding your skill and, and then running with it. Um, so, yeah, we've got quite a few different brands. Um, we've got uh, Tap, Boomerang and Ooh. We stock those here. Uh, we have stocked in the past BAM, Elaborate Eyes, Diva. There's a heap of brands out there. So, uh, yeah, go take a look and find what you like. Uh, let me bring this up here. So why I use stencils? Well, because they're easy, and a lot of, but I need to get the paint consistency right. Uh, they're fast, and actually they're super fast. Uh, they're perfect for events where you're really busy and you just want to get through people really quickly. Um, and they're great for beginners or volunteers once you get the hang of it. And they add interest to your designs with not too much effort. The other thing stencils are great for is UV designs because you've got this negative space and that's where the UV paint really works. Now, I was looking around for, um, for a design to show you today and this one is by Andra from Inner Colour Face Painting. She's in Melbourne. She's a world champion UV, the uh, world champion um, body painting festival. She's the current champion and she has some fantastic designs. So, yeah, she's fantastic for YouTube. I think she does classes, so maybe well worth going and having a look at her website. That is inner colour face painting. So common problems and solutions. We're looking at the blurry edges. Uh, we're looking at wet paint is too wet, so you want to get that tacky consistency. You do want to keep the stencil still and the person still. It's kind of like a dabbing motion, and, and that you know it's a little bit like you come at it, a child and you're like dab 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 dab. That's how it is. Um, there's different techniques. You've got the finger dauber or the sponge. The finger dauber is great for accurate. Um, accurate application but the sponge you can actually put multicolors on at once if uh, with the stencils so that can work too um, positioning them somewhere where you've got a firm surface and keeping them in place with your fingers remember we've got q a at the end so if you've got questions i can see holly's got a question uh, we will get back to that at the end i'll just quickly pop it up here 
Holly, Holly asks, what is the benefit of different shapes of stencils? And are there certain shapes that work best on certain parts of the face? We will get back to that at the end. So there's Lorna, we've jumped ahead. And now we come to our lovely Ratty. And in Adelaide, Ratty's face painting, go check her out on Instagram. Uh, here she is. I'm going to add her in. And let's see. There we go. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. So, Ratty, um, let me just go back here. You are, oh, I forgot to do your proper intro. So, in Adelaide, you've been face painting every day since 2017, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Every, every day. Amazing. Uh, if you, Thank you. you. Know, if, uh, you need to go follow Ratty on Instagram. And um, she's a very talented artist. She's done teaching at the Australian Body Art Awards. And she's one of our instructors here at Face Bank Club and our guides. She's a super positive person, very supportive. And if you've been in any part of our group, you will know uh, Ratty's work. And she does some wonderful videos. So, Ratty, um, are you are you ready to paint? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm gonna ask my husband to be my model. Just give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. <laughs> what we might do while Ratty's uh, helping her hubby, let me see if I can get back here and find. The bit that we have. Oh, there we go. Ratty is also a henna artist. Uh, she is, she paints to talk canvas. Okay. She is, um, uh, let me see, painting canvas gardener. And, uh, and yeah, she's been painting every day since. Here we are. She's <laughs> pretty amazing. All right, let me find um, our lovely lady down here in, oops, no, the wrong one. Oops. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? Say hello, sir. Uh, hello. Hello. Hey, how are you going? Hey. Uh, left, left, sorry. Sorry, hey, hey, left, thank you. I'm model today. Ooh, oh, good. That's okay. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm you moving parts. Oh, there's me. There's you. <laughs> thank you for coming in today. So, uh, Ready's going to give us a demonstration. I'm going to make her full screen, or you full screen, for the star of the show, and, uh, and take it away, Ready. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. I think today I would like to try the um, monster truck or uh, uh, racing car, but for this one I will use this. St oh, where is it? <laughs> star, star oh, um, yeah. stencils, and then my absolute favorite, the tire track thing. So for this one, I I like to add the. Um, First, I'm using sponges and I use this split frost. So you're going to show the multi, are oh, you doing a base layer first, yeah? For the, yeah, sorry, for the base. Um, all right, have a look. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I got more down here today. <laughs> so I've added this like that. If you can see, okay. Yes. So basically just add color to it. And the next, actually I just saw Lorna's um, tutorial how to do the fire yesterday, it was so cool. That was so nice. I would do this, I will, yeah, I will do the same thing. So I will use I, this, pardon? Do you paint your hubby often? No, <laughs> that's why I was doing yesterday. <laughs> Um, today I'm using three um, angle brush, three fourth A, and then I'll use the fire split color from the uh, elemental palette. So I just do the fire. You look like you fall asleep. <laughs> and then doing that. For the fire, if you can see it. Yes. There you go. You want, can you please and lean in just a towards the camera? Just a quick lean in. Pardon? Can, yes, you have it. Yeah, beautiful. There you go. <laughs> so that's for the fire. And next I will add using the same palette. Oops, I'm using the same palette, the elemental palette. I'm doing the blue one. 
I'm using um filbert brush size eight. So I'm basically loaded. And then with this front, so I'll make a light. This line like that. And um, A bit. And use a little bit. That's for top bit. Let's come closer again. That's um for monster truck. You can big make a big body, but this one up. Try to make the uh, racing car, but they're similar. If it's monster truck, you can just do one. Sorry, Darren. There you go. You can just do one of these and then add a bit and then some flag. But this is for the racing car. That's so far. And then I'm going to add. The wheels just basically thanks Tara and sometimes I'm a bit lazy I'm doing outline using still the same brush This is make it quicker when you're doing it on the job. And then. The less times you're loading your brush, the quicker you're painting. That's, because each time you reload. Yeah. It. Really save your time. <laughs> Adding a bit of light to the front here. And at the back. And again, I'm using this making outline as well. And bit of. And then I'm going to use this oops stencil the oops, <laughs> the stars for the uh, the car make it look more interesting. Just basically, I'm using finger dabbers and then some oops, spray, and I'm using bright white XL art. And adding to stars to the car. Can you please come closer? Oh, cute. So that's a bit basically just a quick one. And now I'm using another finger dabber for black for the track. And I'm using black XO art, jet black. I use for the and use the stencil. Are you okay if I add glitter to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't imagine it's going for a meeting with the glitters on. <laughs> um, thank you. And another side. Oops. That is basically almost done. And then I use round brush number three. Just adding some detail. 
So on the job ready, this is probably a three minute, four minute design. Three minutes, yes. Um, so yes, really quick one. Mm. It'd be great on the arm as well. This, this could work on somebody's arm and kids. Oh, definitely. Like, yeah. So. This is just add the little details. And sorry, I have to use my finger. I forgot my uh, jet applicator. Because <laughs> my hand's going. <laughs> <laughs> so let's quickly add some glitters. It, uh, your model isn't wriggling around quite enough, is it? <laughs> 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 there you go. Oh, look at that. Fabulous. Yes. So I it's basically, it. yes. Yeah, lots of three, four things. minutes. Yeah. Because you're three young little boy under three, four years old that really like this kind of design. So you can't really go more than five minutes. No, you want to keep it fast. And you also, um, what would be great is maybe doing it in red, like Lightning McQueen. Like because yeah, I've been asked to paint Lightning McQueen before, and it wasn't too good. So this is really cute. You could do this little number ninety five, and off you go. Yep, and yes, um, yeah, I did uh, the other mermaid as well. It's just a different. Oh, yes. Sorry, <laughs> there Um, so it's just using the focal point. Uh, yes, the focal point in the middle, and also yeah, under the temples, yeah. Yeah, and, and then for like yeah, and this for I add stars under the cheek as well. The the stars earlier I used for the for the 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 car. Right, but it's yep. really I like that I like that one. So, so oh. stars are like stars are really popular. Yeah, very cute. Yeah, so yeah, and then um yes. Excellent. I need him to back uh, to work and then. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, can help you. Thank you so much. You have glitter. You have glitter for for days. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's fabulous. Now, when you first using stencils, did you have any issues? Did you find that there was any? Was it um, stuff or was it? I don't. To be honest, I don't use it that often because. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit tricky. <laughs> it's easier you know, than doing freehand. If you can do freehand one stroke, you know, often it, that's quite fast in itself anyway. Uh, yeah, but as yeah. a beginner, just getting the hang of using stencils, it's like mm -hmm. some people think it's a cheat and it, it's not. It's like it does make it a lot easier and if you use oh, it yes, in the definitely. Right way, yeah, it, but you do need to get used to doing it because it's not an instant kind of like. I'm used to this stuff a lot and then the, yeah. Yeah, this is stencil, the uh, mermaid one. That's my most favorite. But uh, yeah, I do it. I'm adding it as an extra. Yeah. I have time. Yeah. yeah. But the other. Uh, yep. Go ahead. No. You go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the other tips is um, for the stencils, either you use very bright white color and then a bit darker, like for this one. Mm hmm. Uh, the background is um bright, and then I use purple for the stencil. Yeah. Or either white. So yes, the nice other tips just like yes, yeah, the contrast will like. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so cool. this one's blue, uh, purple from the uh, the creative palette. I use this purple. Right. This one. Yeah. Where is it? Very nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Lovely. So. And uh, yeah, I use a lot for um, uh, usually for the adult for the festival thing. Like last time, Barbie. <laughs> I have to paint like two, three minute Barbie. All right, dab, dab, dab. Next glitter, and then yes, that will be really quick if you if you good at it. <laughs> Pink glitter and uh, stencils for the star stencils, maybe for Barbie. Yeah, yeah. stars or heart. I've heart. got this heart as well for the Barbie. Right. <laughs> Cool. Being purple, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been lovely to see you today. Uh, I think yeah, uh, we'll you. hop on over now to let's add, uh, let's bring this up full screen, and we'll introduce Ellie Slattery uh, from Perth. And Ellie's been painting since 2017. 
Ellie does, uh, she's a performer by trade and she does costume characters as well as the face painting. Uh, the full, full work, she's been an instructor at the Australian Body Art Awards. She's one of, you also see her a lot in our community. She's a guide and instructor there too. And she has a busy little toddler that keeps in her uh, very, you know, you know, two years old, they're, they're pretty, they're a handful. But uh, Ellie has kindly enjoy, uh, joined us today and I'm just going to bring her in here. And there we go. Go. Let me just um, bring that there. There we go. We can see Ellie's. Um, she's ready to paint. And can you hear us, Ellie? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Ah, fantastic. Yes, we can. We can. So let me just bring this up full screen. There we go. There we are. And and ready to paint. So is that um, is that set up okay? Because I'm going to be painting there. Is that all right? I, well, I can see, I can see there, maybe a little bit lower, just a tad down, but if you can. <laughs> I'm so amazing at technology. I just break everything that I spend so much on. That's good. Um, okay, so let's bring you down. Sorry, guys. I no, good, no, good, no, good. It's awful. There we go. Okay, if I you can know, move this way. Technology is great. It's, it can be frustrating for sure. But here we it's are. It's not all right. I just it. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just, you know, it's amazing, really. This, uh, you know, I had this idea for a online face paint school quite a few years ago, but the tech wasn't there. Here we go. Now, just uh, right. first basis by saying Ellie is left handed. So, it's, for any lefties out there, um, it's, you <laughs> which know, is exactly it's why setting up things. technology is so hard. And I'll <laughs> everything's show made you. for it. <laughs> I'll show you my mug eventually, but at the moment it's sort of all um, clasped in and so I'm, I won't move it because I was yeah, setting it no. up the entire time everyone else was doing their beautiful designs. Okay, um, so I'm going to be doing a design that is um, a little frozen-y type thing on the eye. Okay, mm. so I'm just going to jump jump straight into it. Now, the way that I would do it on a job is I would think less. <laughs> So a lot of the things I will be saying, I actually might do the other way around. So I might start with the background colour. I might start with the stencil. So I, you really can do either. And because of the style that it ends up as, it, it, it just adds to it, really. It's, just, it's all effect and it'll come out in the wash eventually. So I'm going to start by using the, I keep forgetting what this, this one's called, Elemental palette and use the blue you can also use the I think it's fantastic delightful delightful and use a blue there um, metallics are a little bit harder so I'm just going to use this one and again doesn't have to be any particular color all it is is a background shade so I'm going to use a the three quarter of the exo art brush and basically just use any sort of wiggle uh, effect to because what because what you're really doing is creating a background and nothing here is going to look like what it does the only thing I really care about is that it does not look um completely symmetrical because that drives me nuts <laughs> okay so yeah we'll put some there keeping in mind that the focal point is there there and there that's that's it is a trick, all isn't it? if you if if you don't go for symmetry, if you go for asymmetrical, it, you save yep. yourself a lot of hassle. Absolutely, 100%. That is so very true. So I would probably add a little bit, because that to me has too much blue in it, I would take one of the ones that it go, uh, goes closer to the, sorry, <laughs> I just did that so out of camera, it was ridiculous. Um, I would take a bit more white and use it sort of as the way you'd use a filbert brush. <laughs> and sort of just add, add a few more little, I guess, teardrops. Again, it doesn't matter and you'll see why. Now, stencil time. Um, with this design, I like a really, really dark blue. So I use this palette, which has a beautiful blue already, the EXO palette, but I like really dark blue, so I will add black. And I will do that on the job with a finger dauber. I will literally just go once you can mix the colors. You or can twice and then I'll lighter. That's absolutely right. And using using white and black, they're shades, not colors, people. And that's what that's exactly how you do it. All right. So with boards, they take a long time to dry more than a face. So 
in actuality, I should have done the other way around on a board. But let's not let's not worry about that. Now, this is a beautiful one. Um, it's by Oo, which used to be called Oo Ah, didn't it? It did. <laughs> no I, I'm not sure, but maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so it's got two little parts of it. The beauty of this one is it's a it's called a flip stencil, so you can turn it and you know, maneuver it around to where you want it to be. So I'm going to use that really, really dark blue with black and pretty much now that you can see that that is giving a reflection. You probably can't, but it is, and it's giving little, little bubbles there. So that to me, I instantly know that it's too wet. So I'm going to go right back in to a corner of the blue where there, where I haven't already touched it. And I'm just going to try and pounce that the the wet part of it out because it it will otherwise bleed through. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Okay, but again, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> I have a towel that sits on my desk that I can like dab things if a brush is too wet or whatever. I, or Absolutely, like, dab it on that. And that's and that's the smartest thing to do. But of course, um, I'm not intelligent. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 truly. I, I don't ever think about what I'm doing and I should, but it most of the time it works in my favour except that. But that's okay. With beautiful boards. You, got, yeah, you can clean it. There's no like. You can absolutely use it towel. Okay, so now I've probably gone too, too dark with the blue, but that's the beauty of the colour. You just go straight in, grab white if you want. And then I am using the little part of it to add... I'm still on camera, aren't I? I do worry because, yes, as as Kate said, I am left-handed. So I'm just going to add blue there. You want a sort of a feeling like you sat on a lollipop and that sticky, like, rippy, grippy um, sensation when you pull it off your pants, if, if we all have sat on a lollipop like that. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> only, maybe only giant we'll dogs that. sit on lollipops. <laughs> okay right so while that's drying I will come back and do that in white but they that really needs to dry and that really needs to dry again this design on a face would take me two minutes not even it's very very quick so I'm going to use a little this one here the small firm angle bolt brush now you can also use a filbert which will give you more teardroppy teardrops rather than um, angled. But again, I feel like I repeat this all the time. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> You've got right. to find the brush that's like you, you're liking, you just, you'll start to pick up the same thing over and over again because you like using it. You start to pick, that's absolutely right, but you'll also start mm. to pick up whatever's, whatever is closest to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I, I shouldn't say things like that. Kate's right. I'm lazy. <laughs> right. So you, yes, you you just do little th uh, teardrops here. In fact, I'm going to go straight into white and I constantly change my mind, constantly change my mind throughout what I'm doing. And I think that is the beauty of one stroke, the beauty of face painting because, hey, if they don't like it, they can rub it off. So it's not a tattoo. I'm going to move, gonna not, move this one out of the way. Relax a bit, yeah. What's that? It's not a tattoo and you can relax and just, just go with it. You know, it doesn't That's have to exactly be. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Now, obviously, people don't have paper white skin, so I'm going to move it because I've got a black board under here and you'll be able to see it far more clearly. Um, right, so, yeah, let's see. I'll go there. And then I'm going to use exactly the same stencil. And because I'm doing what I would do, I'm going to go one spray of water into the white, okay, which if, if you are intelligent, no, no, that's just if, if you're a little bit smarter than me and that's not hard, you're going to know that it's going to pick up, even on a child's face, that blue. And guess what? That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to put them wherever ever I want. So you want it to be almost powder dry with, with the white because it's may, maybe touch it in the water, but you definitely don't want a reflection in there. There's no reflection. See, in the corners there are, but where I've been pounding it, it sort of looks like um, 
a delicious fudge treat. <laughs> Why do I talk like that? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and yeah, you just I'll, I'll I'll put them anywhere, and they will pick up that blue, and that's okay. You just you want a little bit. It's all about aesthetics. It's what 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 I think because I'm painting, and hey, I've I've got the command here. What I think looks pretty. <laughs> okay, so that to me looks like a big old mess, but guess what? It won't. I promise you that, because the fun part is about to happen. And what you do is you start the magic with the Global Springback script liner. And this is a, the long and this is, if I, if, if I was known for a style, which I'm not, but if I was, it would be this brush. And this is, this is my absolute favourite brush because it gives you the freedom to do whatever the heck you want without the worry of having really dark lines. So what I'm going to do is anything I want and I'm going to do some swirls, some um, drag and drops. You really can't see what I'm doing. But, and don't worry about any particular formation of what you're doing because it's, 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 it's supposed to be like a snowburst, like, you know, Elsa. Da, da, da. A blizzard. A blizzard, exactly. So I'm just doing swirls and I'm doing very, very fine dragon drops which I like to call river reeds because that's what they remind me of the ones that sit around the dam in old English paintings <laughs> okay that's got see see how that's about to fall that's that's too much so we're just gonna go what a bit more there a bit more there a little more there just wherever it you feel that it could it could benefit for a little bit more keeping in mind your focal points there that's probably the only thing I subconsciously ever really think about. And it is, it is that, that I know where my focal points are. Okay, so you've got your white there. And I'm going to change to back to that really, really dark blue that I've already created. Okay, I'll go in there. Now this one uh, does need to be um, watered and loaded correctly because it needs to have the power to uh, overcome the white. And if it doesn't, it's just going to mesh and you don't want that. Nobody wants that. All right. Thank you. Boom. Boom. I say boom a lot. I say everything a lot. Okay. Oh, sorry. And I'm, I'm, I, did, I did say I'm using that a dark blue. Yeah, I did. All right, boom. Yeah, wherever, if you want to bring one out there, because I do, because I feel like it's just a little bit not quite there. And I'm going to, and you can go from the other end as well. Here we go. It's beautiful to see how with such a thin brush, you can still get such a thick, you can really vary that line. Yes, it's, absolutely. Yeah. And that, the, this, this brush is, variety is absolutely insane you, you it a lot of people used to think it was just for um uh, whiskers and really really fine detail but if you put enough pressure on this brush it's like a diamond <laughs> <laughs> Last See, I don't, i've never really used the script liners because i just i, mm -hmm. I thought it was for fine, really fine lines but you're right but mm -hmm. i can see mm -hmm. that you've just you've mastered it <laughs> Oh, I thank you. I wouldn't say that. Um, but, okay, so I'm going to go into the white. And this is, again, as um, Lorna said, doesn't dry as fast. You can see the shine of it, but I'm not waiting. Um, so what I'm going to do is make sure that there is a good amount of paint. And this is, again, the script liner versatility. You want to add little dots wherever you feel like it. Why not? I'm going to go over there. I'm going to add some there. And I and like I said, I will be moving this so you can see it. I'm going to do another one there because I want to. But when it looks like it's going to fall, boom, boom. Yep. Okay, so I would add glitter, but I have neon glitters and I wouldn't add uh, green and um. Uh, I just spilled that everywhere. 
um, uh, really uh, opaque color. So I'm just going to use one that looks like the one from the Fusion Sparkle palette, which is sold. Um, and I would add it because that's, no matter what I do to my design, I should be putting this with an applicator, but they're impossible, as Lorna said, to do on the board. So I'm using my finger. And I would use a blue or, or a white. The only, the only opaque colour I'd want to use is a white, but it adds to it entirely. And it just adds a little bit of magic and the kids love it because who doesn't love glitter, right? <laughs> Okay. Okay, that will that will do. Beautiful. I love it. And, and boards. I, I will. I will do this first. <laughs> I will do that. I just hope my table is clean. There we go. How's yeah. that? Is that? There we go. I'll um. I'm going to move this and try not to break my everything. Okay. Come on. There we go. Lovely. It's just so many layers, and that's what you're doing with the stencils and that you know, and the and the paint too, the brush strokes, building up a mm -hmm. layer. And you know, you could you could stop at three or four, or you could just or build it up if you've got the time. If you haven't got a long line, yeah. you can just go yeah. with the flow. It's a really it's a really flowing design with that yep. focal point. Yep. It's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. So, everyone, I want you to go find Ellie on Instagram. It's Upstaged Entertainment. We'll, we'll drop links later on for all these uh, lovely instructors so you can go find them on Instagram if you're not already. Uh, you'll just love seeing their variety of work. It's amazing. Um, Ellie, I'm just going to pop you your big screen back up here for a moment while you adjust your camera because we'd love to actually see your face for sure. a quick minute while you, sure. while you prepare. So, um, yeah, uh, what else can we say about Ellie? She's... Look, I love Ellie's style. She has a really free-flowing, organic style of face painting that is unlike anything I had seen before. So that was why I was very excited when she agreed to come and join us here. Um, so well, she's still fixing up the camera. Sarah, um, I'm sure you'll see a lot more of Ellie around. And, uh, and if you can ever catch her with a live workshop in person, I reckon you should give her a go. And, um, and let's have a look here. Uh, there we are now. Almost oh, oh, look at it. Oh, there we <gasps> are. <laughs> right. Hey, okay, I'm all right, getting now. this light out of my way. There we go. Oh, um, yeah, so... <laughs> there we are. Oh, like the Um So, yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. Fantastic. No, it's um, did you Did you find, did you struggle with stencils when you first started or have you always, you know, you, is that something you very, use very often or...? <laughs> Um, I majorly struggled with stencils and I, the same sort of problems, too much uh, water, not enough, not enough paint, it didn't come through on the skin, uh, sunscreen was a big issue. Um, but once I sort of worked out ex exactly that sort of um, consistency it needs to be, made, it made a massive difference. Um, yeah, setup yeah. is still an issue, but I have... This is what I do now. Um, I label them in tiny little cases, the ones that I have, and they're all different colour coded. So they say like most used, that, 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 that. But I also have a, where am I looking? <laughs> I also have no, a <laughs> craft and go, which has a, um, obviously the magnetic background and that whole thing is my most most used stencils. Mm. Yeah, you've yeah. got to keep them handy, otherwise he's just not like you can't be rummaging around for stuff. Otherwise, you no. know, you've got no. all those eyes waiting on you, like waiting, when, when's my turn? <laughs> yeah, and and the things that would be there would be mermaid tail scales, and it took me about five years to find one that I really liked because I hated how big they were. They were more like for crowns rather than yes. actually doing a mermaid and doing its tail. They just weren't small enough, but there are now. There's def there's yeah. one that's on the boomerang one that you sell, Kate. It has very small scales. Yeah, it's good. I want yeah, it. I might, I, I'd be purchasing way. that. Um, and things like snowflakes. Um, what else is there? Yeah, the, you, you oh, ones that you, yeah. stars, stars, yeah. yeah. Th things yeah. like that. The ones that you are your, your go-tos. Um, yeah. 
boys uh, bat bat design like the batmans just ones that you really want to patch uh, the brick wall is really good and a cloud for a rainbow <laughs> Fantastic. That was fabulous. Thank you so much. Lovely to see you You're today. We're going to hop on over to Kimberly now. Let's have a look. Bye. Bye. Oops. Let me just, oops. Uh, oh, now, look, it's too many things for me, to, for me to focus on here. So Kimberly, we'll have to introduce Kimberly, who's over in Western Australia as well, in Mandura. She's been face painting since 2014. Uh, you'll see her a lot. And she makes these fantastic bubble braids, which are really popular. I was at SeaWorld a couple of weeks ago, and these braids things, they were very, very popular. So let me bring in Kimberly, and uh, let me see. I'll bring her up. Big screen. Hey, how are you? Hey. Good. Thanks for you? joining us today. It's good to be here. It's good to be back. I might just adjust this. You can see my head. Now, Kimberly's got a multi camera set up, so I'm going to let's see if we could do this. Uh, there we go. We've got the overhead camera, and, uh, and Kimberly is going to paint a design for us today. Let me have a look. I'll pop this down here. So I'll let you take it away, Kimberly. We'll, I'll get myself out of, this, out of the stream. Awesome. I so I have prepared my board because I don't want to wait for drying times I think that's been explained so I just noticed in the comments somebody asked about the different shapes so this one it's like a moon shape and then you've got one that's a smaller circle and you have big ones like this there's heaps of different shapes um, and what works best they all kind of do the same thing but you know if you've got a smaller face these would work a lot better if you've got one that's on the angle on the cheek it works a lot better and then they also curve around so if you find um i think like lorna said fat cheeks not fat cheeks but the puffiness like this will angle around the cheek a lot better than what a square one would well that's how i find so um i'm gonna go ahead and use these ooh, stencils they are mermaid themed, which I love. I love the little dolphins in this one. Very cute. So I'm going to go ahead and load up a sponge. Now let's talk about different, I guess you've got the pebble sponge. You've got a dauber. Um, well, I just call it a finger sponge. Um, and then I've seen um, somebody use a concealer brush which I haven't used much. Um, so we can give that a shot. I did give it a shot on my arm earlier with the unicorn horn and it worked okay. So that's another option that you could try. I always say experiment to see what works best for you. Um, so I'm going to try a few different ones and see how they come out. All right, so with a pepper sponge, give it a little spritz. And we want to give it that just a little bit damp. Now you can always test spot on your hand if you're not too sure, especially if you're on the job and you don't have a cloth nearby. I always keep a, a clean hand next to me just to make sure that that consistency is good um, because what you're going to do on the stencil is going to come out like that. So you can see that it's not bleeding, it's not bubbling and you know that it's ready to go on the face. So this stencil here, you have multiple different designs. You're obviously not going to want to put that whole thing on your face. You're going to take sections of this design and make it work for you. So I think this will look really cute on the top. And sponge it on. And cute little dolphin design. Then I'm going to go ahead with that little clam and put it in between. This is quite a nice design because it looks like it's almost like a little gem that you've stuck there. I like that. Now we're going to go ahead and try a concealer brush. I'm not sure if anyone else has seen this, but I'm going to dip it in a bit of clean water. I think it would be a bit harder to find the right consistency, but then again, let's test it on the palm. Yep. 
looks probably a bit wet, but we'll give it a crack. And then I'm using the stars on the outside to go just underneath the eye. And a light dab. That works quite nice. A good thing about a brush is that it's washable so you can wash this on the job as well. Whereas sponges, they're usually a single use. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. I was just fiddling around with the um the settings for a second, but I think I, can everyone else hear um hear Kimberly? Yes. <laughs> awesome. So this is just a play around with different textures of stencils and designs. It's obviously it's really hard to do it on plastic. Mm. Um, the, the, the contrast and colours just really pops. Yeah, um, I recommend, I love using white with stencils because white always just pops. Um, we're always going for an opposite colour over the top too because it just makes it crazy. Um, if, if you haven't used a stencil before and you're wanting to practice on skin, what I recommend doing is getting some tape. Take a little bit off and then on your wrist you can tape it down try and get a nice flat side first and you can practice your stencil work on your arm which is a little bit hard because oops wrong one, you're one. Yeah. Um, so let's use a bit of this brush let me know if anyone else has used the contour brush the foundation brush before or, or any other type of tool that'd be interesting yeah um, um, I always encourage using different tools because you might just experiment different. so I've just blended in a bit of blue from my sponge there to create a look and you can see it's bled because the brush is too wet Mm. But a great tip if you're wanting to practice on skin because skin absorbs completely different to the board. Another good idea is practicing on cardboard or paper. Um, it absorbs a lot quicker, so you can use a wetter consistency. Some designs are practiced earlier. Yeah, because the cardboard paper that that absorbs a bit of the, the you know, it does, uh, yeah. the wet. But if you've just ordered a fresh batch of stencils and you're eager to get into them, I recommend trying them out on some paper first, just to get the feel for them. Because if you're rushing into a board, you're probably going to be put off by the bleeding of it. So let's go ahead with our petal sponge. Slightly wet. Rainbow blend here, which I love. It's like a pastel blend. Great for when you want to do multicolors on one stencil. So this is a great design that goes around the eye, across like this way. Um, I would always go. On paper, you can just like run it across, but on the face, you have to, you would dab it. You wouldn't run it across because the paper is more absorbent than the face. So on the job, I would dab this around. And then when you're on a child's face, you always want to lift it off, which is a bit easier than on a flat surface so you don't slide the design. And there is a blended rainbow color. 
Yeah, so you've got a multi, you're like using all the colours with that larger stencil okay. in the one stencil, um, one design. And then if, if your design's a bit wet, which commonly happens, I'd love to spritz it with a bit of glitter, which it kind of gives it that glitter tattoo effect. Well, that's a new tip I, I didn't know. I've been painting for a long time. I didn't know that. Yeah, so if your stencil yeah, is um, wet, it's going to stick to that area and it makes it pop. I like that look. Very nice. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Fabulous. Well, let me just bring you up here. That's great. Excellent. Um, now, what about you when you started? Did you, was it a love at first sight with stencils or did you No, I like... hated it. I, it bled for me and I was like, no, oh, I can't get the hang of this. So it took me some time to get that right consistency. Yeah. Um, and it's like, like, it's like, ruined my design. <laughs> yeah. And just like loading up your brush, you want that creamy consistency when you load up, you know, your inch brushes with the one strokes. You need that good consistency. Same to stencils. You need to get them at that sticky consistency on your sponge otherwise it's just going to bleed and you won't like yeah. it at all no, it um, but practice lots of practice um cleaning them wet wipes are your best friend always have wet wipes with me um after each design i will usually grab my wet wipe pinch it around and clean both areas You can give it a spritz with your antibacterial spray or alcohol spray that you have on the job. And that's how you clean them. They, the plastic that is used to make stencils is really good, easy to clean. Um, you can clean them in the sink with hot water. Um, I've had stencils for six, seven years and I've still got them and they're still running strong. I think this one's probably about six years old. Elsa one. You, you um, just gotta look out for the little, the tiny bits. You don't like break them. That I was, just, I was just about to mention, you just gotta watch the little bits because when I'm cleaning it, they'll catch on your wet wipe. I do have a little bit that sticks up. And I'm always cautious of, of the spiky bits because when you put that on a child's cheek, they're gonna get a little um, spikes and make sure if you're using delicate designs like this that there's no bits that have stuck up if you have an older stencil um, but you can push them back into place whoops hang on i've done the wrong thing there we go oh look <laughs> all the camera angles yeah that, that's fantastic thank you now let me just pop it up here so if anyone wants to find kimberly uh we can find her on instagram as well under kyverse face painting um Lorna is under Lenny Dim. Uh I will pop all the links later on underneath. Um and I think that is fabulous. So let me just put that here and let me see if I can add everyone in here. Add, add, add. We'll say hi to Beverly too, who's been manning our chat. Um and remove that one. Oh, look at that. Uh, this, this technology is really great, but um you've got to learn to drive it and it's new. Uh, yeah. All right, so it's been lovely having gone, we've gone over time. I just want to uh, let everyone know that uh, we have a QA and a and I'm going to be checking that now. Um, I do have one from earlier, let me say from Jenna. And Jenna was asking, it's not quite stencil related, but I thought we just, what we're doing is we might get a quick um one a quick question was um, she's watching the videos and the crash course and wondering something. Sometimes I spray the paints and other times I use a wet brush to activate. Sometimes I do both. Uh, mm -hmm. Should we spray the colours first? Is it necessary? Do I just use a brush? Uh, so in that respect, I think, you know, I do do both myself. And I, I just caution you as a beginner, if you're learning, to not add too much water to your paint and let it dry out in between. So um, the white, if you're going to be using that a lot on a job and adding a lot of water, it's going to build up that water in there and oversaturate and it can destroy the structure of your white paint and make it gloopy. So what you need to do is really add water with caution. And once it's activated, like after, after you've used it a couple of times, and that's it, you don't really need to add much more water to it. You can just keep going until it starts getting dry. So that is, um, I do both. I'll just quickly ask you guys, uh, how about with Lorna? We haven't heard from Lorna for a while. Let's pop you up here, Lorna. What about you? <laughs> do we, um, do you use a, a spritzer or a brush or both? Oh, hang on. So I've got to put your microphone I, on. 
Sorry, what was I that? For- I forgot your microphone. It's on now. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely um, the water bottle spritzer. I don't add, like to add too much water to my paint because you can't take it away. Once you've added too much, it's going to be hard to get rid of it. So I'd rather add as I go um, and spritz my sponges. If I'm using sponges, I don't spritz the cake at all. Yes, I find that I I, I spritz my sponges. Oh, hang on. I spritz my um so, because I do about three sprays in the sponge, and that is kind of like perfect for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then using a spray bottle spritzer is much easier to control the water than trying to dab into a water bucket. Um, you're going to add sure. too much water if you're dipping your sponge directly into the water. You have to be very careful. Um, so, this is just easier to control. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Ellie? Um, I would actually say the opposite to what Lorna just said. I find it far harder to um, <laughs> goes everywhere. It's like, oh, all right. Um, so I, when when I'm using there's a big brush, I would, <laughs> I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I go just the tip, so like just the tip, and then I go onto a towel, and then just the tip there. And so there is the like tiniest little bit of water and that will carry as you load a one a one stroke. With um, block colours, yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Kimberly? There's a big area to be able to do it, is what I say. What's that? There's a larger area and yes, so it's, right. it's easier that to get, if you yeah. want clothes, you get it. And it's you want that to... to um, change the consistency more than a one stroke would and it's a bit more freedom to be able to do yes. it with one color because they're not going to mix yeah yeah for sure Kimberly what about you um, I encourage to try both ways mm. always you want it to be drier more than wet but um, I've tried you know multiple different ways and I've gotten to the skill I have now without much you know, I didn't watch many tutorials on how to get there, but I've tried a lot of things. So I encourage trying things because you'll develop your own unique style or how you like it. Experiment, yeah, for sure. Yeah, You've got to find your own groove. But yeah. but do take care not to add too much water to your paint while you're experimenting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what about you, Ratty? Um, I'm pretty much doing the same like L. I dip a bit in the water and then dub it on the towel next to it. And that's a lot easier than a spray. I only use spray for the uh, sponges. Yeah. I, I, and, yeah. Pretty much, that's yeah. what I mean. It's hard. Yeah. Like, you're just doing stuff and you don't sort of, you know, as you're going on the job, you're kind of just doing yeah. things and, yeah, you develop whatever habit you have. But the key is just not to make it too wet. The larger pan's a bit more forgiving. And if you're going to use a spritzer, I, I find, yeah, using it on a sponge is, is what I do most of the time. Um, and maybe just at the start of the day, I might just give everything a really light mist just to give it a little bit of, um, you know, activate it at the start of the thing because the first c- couple of paints you do are a little bit dry and sticky until, you know, it gets into that flow. Okay, so what other questions have we got here in the comments? I know we're running out of time, so let us quickly. Oh. Um, just, yes? just on that, what you just said, I do wet uh, if using the one-stroke brushes like the three-quarter of the inch um, and the five-eighths, I will put that in water and give it a good old swiggle um, yes. because it opens all the bristles. So that already is like, bam, I'm ready for paint, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, your brushes need to be wet but not dripping. So, that, you know, and it's just something you have to just do and learn and that get it wrong and then do it again. So oh, you'll get it okay. wrong. Get you get it wrong for sure and that's all part of it and yeah it's all part of it so we've got a question here the best way to hold them still i assume that's the, oh, the stencil still while using on little uh, wrigglers and, and kids so i think we we kind of covered that with like um you know holding it at two points um uh, getting the head, child in the headlock as many fingers on the stencil at a time as possible so you can walk them around the stencil but yeah Wrigglers are going to happen. They're going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They, they are. And, and my thing with wrigglers is that I'm just, I'm, look, I'm there to make it fun for them, but also get it over with as quickly as possible. Because they, you just, you've got to let it go. <laughs> just Sometimes gotta, you need, I was going to say, sing Frozen. Sing Frozen to them. And then, <laughs> well, if you can sing, yes. Just sing yeah. with you. 
They won't move. Whisper them to, yeah, and talking to them too and getting to close their eyes. Because sometimes the hand um, of the parent on the back of their head to stop them because they tend to go backwards as <laughs> push on there. So oh, sometimes boy. the parent <laughs> holding the back of their head, not forcing them, but just <laughs> encouraging them to stay still and not lean back. Yeah. If the parent holding, like we, when you've got a stencil and it's up against the face, use use your <laughs> what is that part called? Palm. Um, Oh. that whatever that is right there on the thumb um I, I, i'm having a blank i've got a really bad cold um yes but use that and then use the side of your fingers so to apply pressure around where you're not doing the sensor so if you're putting that there you use your, your it is palm you're right it's palm so you put your palm there and sort of angle it around that way you I, can still see the other hand yeah i do have a, another tip um, I find when I approach the child with your stencil, so say you're ready to put on a unicorn horn, if you show them the stencil in front of them, they're going to look at it and if they're not too sure what it is, they're going to look at it and they keep looking up at the stencil. <laughs> so what I do is I have the sponge in front of them and I put the sponge with the colour on it and I don't show them the stencil at all and I just kind of slide it in. It's a magician. And then I'll go on. <laughs> because otherwise they get distracted by what the hell are you putting on my face right now? It's not a brush. What is it? Mm -hmm. um so it's a good way to distract them as you've got them just relax and then you just slide in the stencil so they don't really see it mm -hmm. and then you do the down it's like the oh, dentist right. when they're about to give you a needle the child oh, yeah. like, you see, you know, you distract them with the colorful sponge <laughs> um, and i find that works really well because i've had a lot of small child kids that just go what is that and then they look at it and so it's mm -hmm. just the little things yeah, it's yeah, little, little tip. That's a, that's a good one. What else have we got here? We've got a question from Holly. What's the benefit of the different shapes of stencils, and are there certain shapes that work best on certain parts of the face? So, I, maybe are you meaning like you've got the the round? I don't know the round stencils, and then the boomerang. I think they're just part of branding for some of them. Um, yeah. What I do like is having a stencil that's got a little something on the side that I can hold onto, like an area that yes. I can put my finger on. Um, yeah, it's a really matter of personal preference, I think. What do you guys like, reckon? I mean, everything. <laughs> yeah. I think mm -hmm. there's like rectangles. Like, there's... Yeah. You would probably want to stick to the same, uh, if, you, if you were to bring them all together, you want to stick to the same brand on one because they sit nicely together rather than... Yeah, so I tuck them all together. <laughs> You'd want to, wouldn't you? <laughs> Okay. But I think that some of them are like, you know, fit nicely around the temple or across yeah, the forehead if, or whatever. If so. you see this moon one that fits around your face, it slides in there nicely versus this one that covers your whole eye. Yeah. Yeah, that one is kind of more for the forehead, I think. Some are, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Um, and I found the rectangles a bit tricky to work with. Uh, so... Yeah, so that's quite. That's probably more for body painting or or airbrush. Like it works, yeah. but it works on the forehead. Or if you're just using it like that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, so, the smaller, obviously, the easier because you can control not leaving marks or fingerprints or things like that. So the smaller, I find the easier. Plus, you don't have the um, worry of going into another stencil when you're pounding. And. <laughs> Um, but there are ones that have shapes like this that are for crowns. As you can see, I use all my stencils. They're untouched. But <laughs> you will buy them and you'll be like, yes, perfect for that. But you, there are definitely ones that are shaped for <clears throat> design crowns or, you know, uh, feature sort of things. Th this one, again, untouched, um, is act actually has, um, I, think, I think it's BAM, isn't it? Yeah. But it actually has like this is where the eye goes, so you'll have the stars going up there. And of course, that doesn't work for me because I don't follow rules. <laughs> but that is, a, I think, uh, what it's intended for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So next question. I think we're going to run out of time soon, but I'll just <laughs> get a couple more questions. Uh, I've got some stencils chided on my arm using a foundation sponge. It seems to work. Are there any downsides with using a foundation sponge? I mean, I think. Don't think so. Uh, I think that if it work. works for you, do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. I find that foundation um, 
don't hold paint as well, but they yeah. to, like mm. when I first started face painting, I was using them because they were easily to, uh, you know, try. I just don't think they hold paint as well. Um, no. They would they would work for a star blend powder. <coughs> yeah. Does anyone yeah, use it? Go to smoothies. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is a smoothie, very well used smoothie, and a star blend powder is ah, there. We go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. You can use powders with the uh, yeah. stencils as well. And so. I was going to, but I cannot use it on a board. It does not work yeah. on a board. Doesn't stick. It's mm -hmm. absolutely needs to go on skin. Um, but that's that's the star blend powder. I don't know whether you can see the yellow. But yeah, that gives a very nice um, smooth consistency. And star, star blend powder has the benefit of being able to be put on wet paint. Um, so you, if you were doing stenciling on paint, you don't have to wait as long for the base layer to dry. Mm. Yeah. And hot weather as well. And hot weather, yeah. It's, it's a bit more hot. sweat resistant, yeah. Uh, a last question, I think, uh, is would some kind of paint spray suitable for skin if there is such a thing be quicker to use with stencils? So like airbrush yeah. maybe? <clears throat> airbrush is way quicker. It's yeah, but you've got to have a big thing. Yeah, airbrush? Yeah. Does anybody it. else do airbrush tattoos? No? I want to, but I'm yeah. not going to. I, I do. I used to. Yeah. Really it's a lot of equipment to lug around and you're not going to be able to do face painting and airbrush at the same time um yeah. Yeah. I, I had a small pro air kit yeah. um and it's just it's they're great but they're just a lot of work to clean yeah airbrushing it's, is a it's whole different yeah yeah it is yeah so much problem solving on the job yeah mm. yes when things go wrong uh yes. let's have a look uh, we do have one more question uh, and then we will go um is there a better paint to use the top layer over the base whether it's a stencil or teardrop always seem to drag the base colour into my white, even if I think it's dry. Is there a particular, do you mean a better brand or maybe do you mean re regular paint versus? paint versus that sort of thing? So say that again? Like, uh, does she mean a consistency of, say, the same colour of the paint or does she mean different colours? Because there's glycerin-based, like, waxy paints or there's the water-based ones and obviously yeah. glycerin-based waxy ones, they're far more opaque. They require a little bit more... Uh, elbow grease to get the color but they will stand out <coughs> so if you want that sort of bright bang stencil i definitely use a waxy glycerin based one which i think fusion is has those uh tag is global yeah. but global fusion tag part explosion dfx uh, Iron Band EXO, uh, there's probably quite a few others. And then there's um, Meron would be the glycerin-based one, which is a softer type of paint, really good uh, for your blending and body painting and bases, doing nice bases, uh, but not so great for one stroke maybe. Um, but, yeah, so there's horses for courses. Does she mean um, she's dragging it as opposed to dabbing maybe? Maybe so dabbing will pop a note in the in the uh, in the chat, if you are know. dragging it, then you are going to smudge the colours underneath. As opposed mm -hmm. to if you're dabbing, it'll be a much more opaque colour yeah. on top, maybe. If that's Come down to a bit of technique, and, and then even star blends on top, which might not be so opaque, but it's definitely dry, and you can do it, you know, quite a lot quicker uh, as long as the base is dry underneath. But yeah. Um, all right, I think that's it. Uh, I think we might uh, wind it up and. Um, and thank everyone for coming. Let me just bring this up here. Uh, I've had a great time. And our next workshop, oops, is arm designs. And we've got that coming up. So what we're going to try and do, what we're going to do, is have a live workshop like this every month. It's really great to have a round table, get lots of different opinions uh, and, and ways to do things because I think <coughs> everyone's got a different way of doing it. That's on the 24th of August. Um, I hope we can see you all again there and we'll tell your friends. I think uh, that... If you want to join our Face Paint Club Pro, we are going to open up that pretty soon. So you can head over to thefacepaintclub.com and uh, register there. Uh, let me see if I can fast forward that. Have a look. And that is the end. So I want to thank everyone for coming. It's been lovely to uh, see everyone in the audience. Also, these lovely superstars here. I want you to go and find them on Instagram and Facebook, wherever they are, and go follow them. They're amazing people. And I look forward to seeing you all in soon in Face Paint Club. And bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 bye.